Anyone can figure out how to set up a live stream. It's not hard to set up a couple of scenes and then just click the go live button and you're live. Except this is not going to be a good live stream. There is just a lot more to creating a good live stream than that. But it doesn't have to take long or cost anything to create an awesome live stream with these five easy tips. my YouTube friends. Today I want to talk about five easy tips that can help you easily improve your live streams and they're totally free. Let's start out with the obvious stuff and that's the stuff you actually see. Tip number one, spend some time on your actual backdrop. Now I can't tell you how many streams I see with a white wall in the background or a messy bedroom. How long does it really take to move the camera and create a bit of custom personality for your own backdrop? It's like the ultimate in lazy, and if you don't care, why should the audience? You have a personality and your background is the perfect way to express that. If you love movies, leave clues in your backdrop. Play guitar, why not display them in your backdrop? Love to read? A couple of well-placed books lets the audience know what sort of things you're actually into. Anything will be better than a white wall. Take some time and put in the effort to light your camera properly and create a background that you're proud of. That tells the audience you're a bit more than just what they see on camera. You know what gets boring on live streams? The same old thing all the time. So tip number two, create different segments for your stream. A couple of options for a game streamer could be watching the replay of another streamer, playing your normal game, and giving it a bit of commentary. Looking through trailers of games that are coming out soon and giving your opinion. Responding to questions submitted on Twitter or some other site. And there are so many other possibilities, they're literally limitless. You should never have a stream where you just play games for three hours. Anyone can do that. Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please do. And maybe click that bell so you know when I'm going live, because maybe you have a question or two. This really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. And that leads me into our third tip. Create visual variety. You now have different segments, so that makes it easy to create some visual variety. Each segment should have its very own unique scene layout. And that means putting the camera and assets in different locations. In fact, for the same segment, you can have different layouts and cameras to add even more variety. It's really easy to switch scenes, and if you have three different layouts for the same segment, it's easy to switch between them too to keep things fresh. You can do it on a whim or you can even set it up with something like the automatic scene switcher to do it for you. But don't stop there. Every scene can have a unique camera overlay and unique alerts and even unique transitions. These are so easy to create and set up. There is no reason to use the same old same every single time. All this stuff makes your streams visually interesting and unique every step of the way. And that leads me to the fourth tip, plan your streams. Now you have a sexy background, different segments, and lots of visual variety. All that's left is the plan. Now I don't mean you have to plan for every segment with a script down to the very last word, but I do think some bullet points for each piece will make everything flow a lot better. Planning is especially important for creating content that you wanna release later because it can easily be segmented out. So maybe you start out with a segment where you talk to the audience for a bit. Then maybe you wanna play through your regular game for a half an hour. That's cool, but maybe set up a scenario that you plan to play through to make it more interesting or challenging. An example might be you want to beat this dungeon without any armor, or maybe kill every NPC in this whole town with an ice pick. Whatever it is, these sorts of challenges make for great standalone content later, and they keep the segments to a reasonable length as well. And there's no planning here other than the challenge that you plan to undertake which of course you have to think of before you actually go live. Maybe then you go to another segment where you answer questions and it seems smart to select the questions ahead of time 
or at least know where you're gonna get them from. The point is create a simple outline for your segments on your live stream. It makes things flow a lot easier and when you are streaming, you don't have to worry about what's gonna happen next. You can just be entertaining. And that takes me to tip number five. And this is an often overlooked step that's gonna make any live stream better. Test your stream fully. When you live stream, something will go wrong. It just will. Testing is not gonna eliminate every possible issue. With that being said, if you make sure to test all of your transitions, your scenes, your alerts, your microphones, your cameras, your headphones, apps, and anything else you plan to use, you get used to troubleshooting these things that can actually go wrong. If you know what things can go wrong, you won't freak out and panic when they actually do happen live. But more importantly, you're gonna know how to fix them quickly. Testing gives you that experience while helping you to create a stream that's gonna work better with less things that actually do go wrong. It is possible that everything works perfectly until you put your headphones on or you actually push that go live button. You wanna know any of that before you actually go live and you won't know it unless you test. And once you do that, you're totally prepared to put on a live stream that you're going to be proud of that will entertain your audience. And for those of you wondering, I do this same process every week. I have multiple scenes. In fact, I have more than 20 for the Monica cam alone. I have multiple alerts, several tutorial scenes, and I make sure to move to different scenes as often as I possibly can. I have multiple camera overlays that I use on different scenes as well, and none of that happened overnight. It will take time for you to do all those things, but when you do, you're gonna have a dynamic stream with some fun things planned where you don't have to be the only entertaining piece of the show. Your background is interesting. You have fun segments to keep things moving. Boredom is never a problem because you have different scenes, alerts, and transitions to keep the visuals fresh. Then you have your plan so you never feel lost and you tested your stream. So when something goes wrong, you're not gonna panic about that either. Now you're ready to push that go live button. If you wanna learn how to do any of the things that I talk about in this video, like create custom alerts, custom transitions, multiple cameras, custom camera borders, or anything else, let me know in the comments. I probably have a video for each one of those things. In the meantime, here's a video on creating custom animated camera masks. Big thanks to all the sponsors that support this channel. You can find their links down below in the description under the heading sponsors. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.